Hello, it is Saturday, November 20th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. Today, we will be solving the Saturday Crossword, our second of two themeless puzzles of the week, and the more difficult of the two, and probably the most difficult of them all of the seven days. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are as well. Uh, quickly, I will mention the new Twitter account at The Daily Solve, which you can follow for updates about this series each day, and the Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash daily solve, where you can directly support this channel and in the process, get some bonus video solves. Uh, today, actually, I think in about 20 minutes, certainly by the time this video goes live, there will be live the most recent solve of the latest Boss Words Fall Themeless League competition puzzle. It was another very tough week, I must say. It was, it was not my finest performance, not my worst performance, but, but not my best. I find these so challenging. I was saying on that that solve. This is the um, this is the the weekly competition league um, with puzzles that, at least at the difficulty level I opted into, aims to be more difficult than New York Times Saturday puzzle. So today's puzzle will probably be easier than the one that I solved yesterday for boss words. At least that's what I suspect. And um, I was saying on the on the solve, I'm certainly going to participate in the next one of these. I'm going to continue to do it at the most difficult challenge level, and I really hope that in the winter league, I will be able to improve a bit. I do. Th I do think, even though my times aren't getting dramatically impressive, they're they're not they're not dramatically improving. They're not becoming incredibly impressive, but I do think I am I'm understanding better what's going on in that style, the boss word style, which is a lot of misdirection, a lot of wordplay. It's very challenging. Um, so I'm looking forward to actually to starting the next one already, even though it's really putting me through my paces. Um, I do enjoy them. Uh, anyway, that's up there on the Patreon. Sorry for going on and on about that, but it's going up today. And, um, and there's the Discord chat server. You can chat with folks from this community uh, about puzzles, New York Times, and otherwise. And there's a link in the description field underneath each video. All right, let's talk about two clues from yesterday's puzzle. Actually, you know what? It's the same clue. I think it's the, uh, I, was, I was realizing as I was solving the Friday puzzle that there weren't really very many clues that I needed more context around, which was sort of a nice feeling. Um, but one that had one fact and one sort of little anecdote from viewers was the very first one in the puzzle. The, uh, the one that dealt with a phrase from um, Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. And I thought, perhaps it's Dead Men Tell No Tales, but it wasn't, it didn't fit. But on the topic of that phrase, Dead Men Tell No, Tell no Tales, Bice Dibley explains that Dead Men Tell No Tales is a loose translation of the Latin phrase mortui non mortem from Plutarch. It means, more literally, dead men don't bite, which is the version used several times in Treasure Island. That is very interesting because I find Dead Men Tell No Tales to be much more evocative and um, much more evocative and poetic, at least in English. I don't, I don't doubt that if I were a fluent Latin speaker, I might uh, better appreciate that construction in Latin. But there's something about Dead Men Tell No Tales. One, it's got that uh, sing-song, it's not iambic, it's the opposite of iambic, where you have stressed and unstressed syllables in alternation, but starting with the stress. So dead men tell no tales. It's got that that uh, sing-song quality. And there's also something about dead men telling no tales. I mean, literally means, well, they can't speak because they're dead, but it also means you aren't going to, to rat on me. If you're dead, there's something very sinister about it. And so the version that's used in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Disneyland, I find to be uh, extremely, extremely evocative and um, atmospheric. It's just a great, just just a great piece of language, I would say. And Kathleen Quinn says, I found this week's Thursday and Friday puzzles to be a couple of ticks easier than normal. On today's Friday puzzle, I was happy to complete it in what for me was record time on my first try. Gotta love that gold star, not the blue try again. And this feat was accomplished even after I even after having entered in the top line what I thought was Long John Silver's memorable phrase and a bottle of rum. I lost some time checking the crosses for it and had to eventually concede 
that it just wasn't going to work. So the bottle of rum went back on the shelf. I think many of us can relate to that experience of entering something that seems like it must be correct um, because it fits the clue and it fits the number of letters. And in this case, the, the correct answer was shiver me timbers. And I could imagine if you entered and a bottle of rum, you must think, well, how could it not be this? It's perfect. It, it's, it's from the book. It fits the number of letters. It's, it, I, I find that sort of experience in equal parts frustrating, but also in some ways sort of delightful because it, it's kind of astonishing to uh, come across these um, little bits of, of linguistic coincidence, especially when it's that many letters. What, what, a, what a funny thing that they happen to, to share that metric. And even, even more frustrating and baffling when sometimes some of the crosses actually work just fine. All right, let's move on to today's puzzle. This is a Saturday crossword constructed by Mary Lou Guizzo and Jeff Chen. And I recognize actually both of these constructor names. I'm, I'm, I know I've solved puzzles by each of these uh, people before. And Jeff Chen in particular is an extremely prolific New York Times crossword constructor. So probably a nice puzzle in store for us today. Let's get started. Okay, sassy. Feels those sassy and related words have come up quite often this week. Um, I mean, it feels though it could be any number of things. Drink with a shot balanced on chopsticks over a beer. Oh, is it a something bomb or a depth charge or something? I don't remember which of those is which. I've never actually really done very many of those sort of stunt drinks. Meredith's half sister on Grey's Anatomy. Well, Grey's Anatomy came up in the last few weeks, and I still have never seen it, so <laughs> haven't improved my knowledge since then. Pac-Man. I don't know what, a porter, perhaps, or someone, a, a shepherd, maybe, someone who deals with a pack of animals. It feels as though there are a few things this could be. Certain record. Well, it could be a record, meaning a statistic. It could be a record, meaning the sort of best attempt at something that's been made could be a record meaning a musical music album it could be an album actually that would fit in five letters does that help song word sung twice before goodbye i don't know i'm sorry part of an equine bloodline it could be a sire or what a mare each of those ends with e eroded could be war, as in war away, eroded something. Played in the wind, say. Played in the wind, blew something. We looked at, um, have I skipped any clues here? Probably, yes. Gracious words when accepting an honor. I'm humbled, maybe? That's um, that's quite a guess. Let's we'll have to check some crosses here. Whirl that uh, could be an eddy, isn't a, a in in a body of water. Make out, so it could be make out as in to to uh, you know to kiss etc. But it could also be to see someone to espy them. Sensor ah could be bleep. Sensor sort of a colloquial way of describing a censorship on television when a word is bleeped out, so to speak. Fountain fair could be colas, as in sodas, and went, oh no, it couldn't, could it? Boo. All right, my <laughs> speculation piled upon speculation has run out of steam. Let's see, are any of these correct? Well, this could be a bomb. And a fountain fair, oh, malts, could be malts at a, uh, at a soda fountain, you could have a, um, you know, mil malted milkshake. All right. Foe of the fighting tigers. I don't know. Multicolor hair effects. Oh, is this Ombers, I think? And Pac-Man, something male. Interesting. And went quickly. Could be darted. Sort of ran quickly. Um, foe of the fighting tigers. I mean, my first thought was maybe this is Puma, which would be another big cat to contrast the tigers, but that seems un unlikely. It would be, I mean, it would be entirely coincidental, right, if they were both big cats. So what about this? Blank Olmert, former Israeli PM, Ehud, 
probably pronouncing all sorts of things incorrect and incorrectly, I'm sorry. Metric speed measure could be kilometers or miles per hour, but either way, pH. And then what is this? Pac-Man. Alpha male, I suppose? A wolf pack? I think that's sort of been disproven at this point, but the phrase remains in common usage. Okay, so made some good progress over here, actually. The first one was printed in the first one printed in America was in 1639. I suspect an almanac. Do almanacs still get published? I don't really know. What sort of annual uh, annals of I don't know facts and statistics and trivia and that sort of thing. I don't know. Opened up during an examination. Um, I'm not sure. So, oh, oh, a sake bomb. Oh, hence the chopsticks, I suppose. So KPH kilometers per hour and opened up during an examination. Could be said something. It could be an oral examination. You opened up, you said something. Exhibition that might attract eye rolls for short. Huh. Oh, a PDA, a, a um, a uh, personal display of affection uh, could be could be a makeout session if this had a different if we were using a different sense of the words the words make out. All right, the highest form of flattery, the highest form of flattery, and there's a question mark which is a pun or wordplay indicator. So, pre, uh, hmm. not sure what the pun is. The highest form of flattery, highest. Is sort of re referring literally to altitude, perhaps? I'm not sure. Oh, the highest form of flattery. Oh, wow, this is, this is cl clever. So what this means is a high, flat surface, a plateau. That is quite clever. I've not seen that before. A Serengeti grazer. Oh, is it a lana? Some sort of animal. No, no, something, something. Uh, I can't remember exactly. Oh, eat, eat. Elon, uh, Elon or something. Lemon, oh, I'm not sure. I can't remember what this animal was called. <laughs> Apologies. Keep going. Joint winner of Times Person of the Year for 2020. I don't. Was it a frontline worker or something like that? I suspect this was one of those things because it came during the pandemic when time probably assigned a sort of collective, because it says joint winner. I suspect if it was more than one winner, it was probably, in this case, a group of people. Um, probably something related to the pandemic, but I'm not sure. Incorrect. Not it or something like that. Intolerable Cruelty Director, 2003, Cohen. Um, I think that was co-directed by the Cohen brothers, but would have been credited just to Joel, I think. Not sure. Anyway. Lemon something. Lemon, oh, Lemon Drop. That could make this a lawn, which I think is the animal. And or maybe not said, opened up during an examination, said, ugh, I just don't know. More vexing, more vexing. So something is either more frustrating or more difficult. You could be vexed as I am being intermittently by this podcast. Not annoyed, just, uh, just facing difficulty. Organization associated with the note series GEC. What does that mean? So GEC would be... What would that be? Oh, in, in a different order, though. Okay, I see. It's NBC. Um, these are the notes of the... Uh, common jingle associated with the National Broadcasting Corporation, NBC in the United States. They have a three-note musical motif that they use in their station identifications, and they're the notes GEC. 
Okay. Um, seriously, be real, be. Symbols on the flags of Algeria and Azerbaijan. Crescents. More vexing. Scoop often used in Indian cuisine. Scoop often used in Indian cuisine. What does that mean? Does it mean using non bread as a scoop to scoop up curry sauce or something? Kind of blue. Not really sure if that's correct. I'm, I'm going to look around. Genre for the dark night, appropriately. Neo noir? I don't really know if I would call the dark night a neo noir. I don't mean. This might be the answer, but I would, I would differ. I would beg to differ, but uh, but it might be, and I think the reason it says the reason I'm I think it might be this is because it says appropriately and noir, meaning uh, black, would correspond to the dark in Dark Knight. So I suspect that's that's why. Mass Appeal Records co-founder. Uh, maybe it's not neo noir. I don't know. Ingredients for pastry cream. Yolks? Is there egg yolk in pastry cream? I don't know. I'm just because of that O. So if that were Y, kind of blue. I don't know. I'm not very confident about anything in this area. What about this? Encouraging words. I don't know. Have we looked at any downs? I'm going to leave this for now, remembering that it might be inaccurate, but I'll leave it for now. Played in the wind. Fixer upper. So fixer upper could be a home, a house or an apartment or a flat that needs some work. Above and beyond with the. Over. I'm not, you know, I don't actually, strangely enough, I can't remember if in answers like this, it's acceptable to insert the the in between two words in the answer, or if it needs to be before or after only. I actually can't recall. I'm going to skip that for now. Oh, right. Part of an equine bloodline. Song words sung twice. So I guess we did see some of these, and I didn't make much um, progress, did I? Pacific Ocean phenomenon, though, could be El Nino. Or La Nina, actually. But I think, and actually, it's funny, because my two guesses for how this word began were L and E, which are exactly those two possibilities. But I, but I, think, it's, I think it is an E. Um, it really does look like Elond, doesn't it? This has really been my my bane throughout this puzzle. Query could be ask. Author who referred to his works as a legendarium. I didn't know this, but it certainly must be Tolkien, mustn't it? Kind of blue. I don't know. No. Oh, could it mean kind of blue? Could it mean a bit sad? Or it could mean a bit risque. I don't really see how any of these fit. <laughs> Sorry. Let's keep looking. Running gear, uh, named after running animals. Don't know. Legends often. One's late to work, question mark? Seriously, again, be something. Kind of blue. Yeah. We've seen all the acrosses. Meredith's not sister, Grey's Anatomy, certain record. Third most popular baby girl's name in 2020 after Olivia and Emma. I don't really know how to guess that, but it's only three letters. Anne, I don't know. That doesn't seem likely. Oh, maybe this is Kamala Harris. It looks like her name would fit in there. Kamala Harris, I should say. Joint winner of Time's Person of the Year for 2020. Okay. Must have been Kamala Harris. I was on the wrong track entirely. Boy, that really put... I was really on the wrong track there. Um, I just had I just had an absolutely ridiculous moment in which I thought, was 2020 actually two years ago? Is it 2022 right now? Did the pandemic start in 2021? Or have we been in it for even longer? I just... I think my entire... Uh, sort of mental model of the world has been utterly scrambled over the past two years. Uh, so I, and I was just glancing at my taskbar on my computer to make sure that the year is in fact 2020. I had a 
very strange moment of existential panic there. It turns out it is 2020. Don't worry. You know what? It says that right on the screen in front of me. I could have looked where I've been looking for the past 15 minutes, and it would have been in front of my face. Also, I could have remembered that it's 2020. That really shouldn't have needed confirmation. Anyway, uh, opened up during examination, as I just said, is ah, uh, in a, in a dentist's chair. And then that finally collapses down the Serengeti grazer to Elond, which after my initial, I think I was maybe combining Elond with Llama or something, and possibly also Lasso. But um, anyway, I did think it was Elond fairly early on, but danced around it for quite a while until finally confirming it just now. All right. So played in the wind, oh, flew a kite. I see. And I should have paid more attention to the say. So this says played in the wind, say. And when it says that, what it means is it isn't a synonym and it's not a definition. Instead, this is an example of that thing. So you played in the wind, say. Oh, one of the things you might have done playing in the wind was flying a kite. So you played in the wind, say, you flew a kite. That's, that's what that means in this case. And sassy, fussy, or feisty, feisty doesn't fit. A certain record. Third most popular baby girl's name. I guess it could be Anne. I don't know. Above and beyond with the. I mean, the couldn't fall after this. That wouldn't make sense. You wouldn't end a phrase with the. But you could start it with the. He, hmm. I don't think so. I think it must be in the middle. It must be over the something or something like that. Over the. I don't know. Maybe not. Does that help here? No, because I have no idea who this person on Grey's Anatomy is. What about anywhere else? If that were Anne, could be Annie, could be what? Ava. Incorrect. Oh, it isn't. I see. Oh, mile, the extra mile. Ah, there we go. So it does fall before. I do think it's probably the case that when a clue says with the, or with another word, it, it does go before or after the answer, not in between it. That is my suspicion. Please don't, um, please don't hold me to that with any kind of serious rigor, but I, but that's my suspicion. Let me know if you think otherwise, based on uh, contradictory examples. Okay. Meredith's half-sister, Lexi, Lexis, there, there certainly are not very many names that can fit in here. They probably almost all have an E as the second letter. And a fixer upper, a tomato, re, sassy, fresh. Uh, don't get fresh with me. Don't get sassy with me. Oh, song, word sung twice between goodbye. Well, I was thinking of the na 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 hey hey goodbye, but that's hey's three times, not twice, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, so anyway, the equine, equine bloodline would be sire, the father of a horse. So Lexi, I suppose. Certain record. An entry, a data entry. So this is hey. What is that? Interesting. So it is a statistic or a piece of data, and then a fixer upper. Oh, a renovator. So. In fact, it's the person who does the fixer-upping, the fixing-upping, the fixer-upper, him or herself, the renovator. And then word before now, ah, air, air now, before now, in a, in a, in a sort of poetic sense. Okay. Ship on which Darwin collected material for On the Origin of Species. I don't think we've seen this clue yet. I think it's the Beagle, though. And legends often. One's late to work. It is the Beagle, isn't it? Seriously, believe me, I see. There we go. It is the Beagle. A gumshoe could be a tech, short for detective. That's a sort of probably slightly archaic bit of slang. I think I only know it because of the crossword. Um, dick comes up occasionally as well, Priv a private dick, um, as in Dick Tracy. So. Uh, two, two slightly archaic terms for detectives, or in this case, a gumshoe, another, 
another slightly archaic word for detective, and actually that's a good thing to observe, which is that gumshoe is itself a slightly archaic phrase. I mean, it comes up, but it's it's a bit dated as slang, and similarly, tech is a bit dated as slang. So often the constructor will helpfully match that sort of trait of the clue to the answer. I didn't really pay attention to that, but in retrospect, it is the case. Uh, more vexing. It's it is more vexing that I that I can't seem to solve more vexing. Encouraging words, you probably you, if you're encouraging, you're addressing somebody. You can do this. Maybe this isn't neo noir. Um, something this. You can do this. I mean, that would fit. Would that fit other parts? I don't know. That blue. I don't know. What about this? Night? One's late to work. Night something? Night guards? Night men? Night watch? One's late to work. Night shift? Night... Why am I not seeing it? Examination. Examinations. I apologize. Uh, tests or exams or sites. Like the flame before X's sometimes. So what, reignited or? I'm not sure. Daughter of Elrond in The Lord of the Rings. Oh, here we have another Tolkien-related clue. I don't remember. Sheltered place could be a cove. Night owls, one's late to work. Oh, I see. It's I was Once I got night for one's late to work, I was really looking for someone who is a night worker. But in fact, and, and because late to work, it has this question mark. It has a pun indicator. So I thought that meant it isn't literally someone who shows up late to work. And you could imagine a night owl being someone who shows up late to work because they don't get enough sleep. So why is this a pun? I suppose because it isn't, I suppose that isn't really the meaning of night owl. We're using night owl in, we're using a property of it differently. And I suppose being late to work that's sort of an in, it's in, it's only indirectly related to this. Um, ah, so encouraging words probably does end with this, which would allow us to fill in Kit Cat Club in Cabaret Locale. Ah, and more vexing would be peskier. There we go. This was indeed a peskier clue for me. It was more vexing, but I finally got it, and it wasn't even very difficult or strange. Legends often insets. I see. Legends in a map, which there might be in an almanac. Did almanacs have maps? I have no idea. It seems like the sort of things they might have had. Uh, running gear named after running animals, Reebok. This is one of those cases in which the brand name has largely overtaken its source, which is a real animal, in a way that I think Amazon is doing to the river. Okay, kind of blue. You've got this. Oh, navy blue. Why was that so difficult? Strange. A very common form of blue. So I don't understand sometimes why my brain can't seem to filter through, sort of balls tumble through the little pachinko machine of my brain and get to the right place. I don't really get it. All right. Neo-noir, I suppose, for the Dark Knight. After all, ingredients for pastry cream probably is yolks, egg yolks. Secretive things could be glands, um, in the sense that glands secrete, and we have they secrete you know, various substances, pheromones and things. And we have a question mark, which is a pun indicator, indicating that secretive things needs to be read a different way. It needs to be read with a bit of wordplay. And in this case, it's referring to things that secrete substances in humans or animals, glands. Okay, French phrase in many bistro names. Um, sorry, I was just checking my phone. Uh, Got to wrap up in a few minutes, which looks likely. French phrase and many bistro names. I wonder if it's la maison, the house. Nope, it's not. What is it? Word in some South American city names could be San or Sao, depending on uh, uh, depending on whether it's Spanish or Portuguese. Maybe it is Sao actually, because that N wouldn't fit here very well, would it? Century of note. Century of note. 
Is this a sports thing? There's a cricket thing that's a century, right? Fearless, unafraid. No, no, not afraid, I, I suppose. It covers a lot of ground. Could be turf, maybe? Tennis star of the 2000s, familiar, familiarly. I, you know, it's funny. I've noticed on this series, I often struggle with familiarly. Familiarly, there we go. All right, lift a lot. Storage units prone to explosions. Silos, I, yes. I believe that um, wheat, I think, is there's something about the fineness of the particles that can be prone to combustion. Mm hmm. And I think that was uh, that was a quite a big problem in uh, medieval Europe, for instance, when uh, much construction was wood, and um, uh, and of course you would have big you'd, you'd often have storehouses and things. And I think possibly the London Fire of sixteen sixty six. I think there's evidence to suggest that might have been related to that type of combustion. Can't quite recall. Maybe it was a lantern. I don't remember. I think there's been different evidence over the years. Anyway, term of address for a noble. Well, I would have thought the Lord, which would make it covers a lot of ground, not turf. So I don't know which of those is more likely. So let's delete them both and get to it elsewhere. One named model and philanthropist. Here's another uh, guess at a pronunciation because I can't remember how her name is pronounced. Iman or Iman. Uh, mm hmm. I say or. Hmm. Medieval servant. A yeoman. Century of note. Oh, senators. There are a hundred senators, a century of them. So a notable hundred. Century of note. A, um, a hundred worth remarking upon, the senators. All right. It, it is sort of funny that we have a hundred of them. I guess that's just a... I, know, I guess there's nothing about senators that indicates that there must be a hundred of them. But there are right now because there just happen to be 50 states. Anyway, French in the United States, in the U.S. Senate specifically. Sorry, there are other Senates in the world. <laughs> Uh, French phrase in many bistro names. Oh, à la maison. There we go. So, at the house of somebody, I guess. Covers a lot of ground to dirt. There we go. Another similar to turf. Tennis stars. Tennis star of the 2000s. Oh, this would be um, Rafa Nadal. And, ah, it is, my lord. it is my lord. And then lift a lot. Oh, could be elate. So, lift as in to make somebody happy, to lift their spirits to elate them, and then mm-hmm is I see, not I say. No? Oh, I didn't finish the puzzle. <laughs> uh, Daughter of Elrond and the Lord of the Rings. Uh, this doesn't really look like a name I know. R Rowan. Relit the frame, flame between... X is, I must have believe, oh, seriously, believe it. Relit, there we go. Native of central Canada, I suspect Cree, an indigenous tribe, and a refined oil product. Art, maybe? In this, I, I would have, so this has a question mark, which means, again, as I've indicated before, this there's some sort of pun or wordplay going on. And so one of these words, well, at least one of these words, or the phrase in general, should not be read literally. And I think what's going on is that art is is a refined uh, product or pastime or pursuit. Art is a refined pursuit, and you could have an oil product, an oil painting. So art could be a refined product of oil. And then that makes the daughter of Elrond Arwen, which sounds plausible, and there is a puzzle. Uh, good, solid, Saturday, themeless crossword, I think. Um, uh, quite a lot of, um, of range in the answers. We had, uh, we had sort of colloquial terms like sake bomb. We had phrases like 
I'm humbled and you've got this. We had public figures like Kamala Harris and sort of more generically senators and Iman. We had pop culture references like Arwen and Tolkien and Lexi. We had, um, I mean, we had straightforward vocabulary, really, like yeoman. Uh, we had po- wordplay, like art. Oh, what was this? Oh, oh, Nas, the, the rapper, Mass Appeal Records co-founder. Okay, I didn't end up coming back to that. We had arguably inaccurate uh, film classifications, like neo-noir for The Dark Knight. Um, more more wordplay with night owls. We had you know, quite a lot in here. Uh, crescents, sort of, um, I don't know, world affairs knowledge. It was it was packed with a meteorological phenomena, El Nino. We had it was just absolutely jam packed with different kinds of clues all over the puzzle. I mean, really an incredibly widespread of answer. So certainly a puzzle to test your breadth, I would say. Test your, your breadth of types of knowledge and not much crossword ease at all. I mean, much like yesterday, I think. Really, really almost none. Uh, there was, I think, one thing that I said I primarily know from crosswords. I can't remember what it was. It might have been tech or detective. I don't think this is relied upon so frequently as to really be considered crosswordies. Um, so really, uh, I think quite a well-filled crossword, a fairly current and, and modern crossword, um, a lot of modernity in it, as well as some... Um, as well as some some things looking further back, like a medieval servant servant a yeoman. Uh, so yes, I think quite quite a nice range. I really enjoyed this Saturday crossword. Let me know if you did as well. Um, I'm curious to know how this intersected with the cross section of knowledge that uh, the viewers have. And I'm sure it with a puzzle like this with such a wide breadth, I'm sure it differed greatly from person to person. This NBC clue was kind of fun. Organization associated with the note series GEC. This would, I suppose, be uh, impenetrable to somebody who wasn't able to sort of turn that into a useful clue. But you, I suppose if you come from a, an American cultural context, you could see that it's three notes and think to yourself, what are the brands or organizations that, and in this case, org is abbreviated, so we know that the answer is going to be itself some kind of abbreviation or contraction or initialism. Um, you could think, what are the brands with three notes associated with themselves? So maybe you'd get there anyway. In any case, thank you for joining me for this crossword. Like I said, I hope you, en- well, I do hope you enjoyed it, and please do subscribe to the series. I, I very much would appreciate that. And like I did say earlier, if you'd like to really help support this channel and series directly, consider heading over to the Patreon campaign and tossing in a few pounds or the equivalent in your local currency, and you will get access to a slate of bonus video solves, as well as um, additional access to the discussion uh, Discord chat server, where you can chat with other folks who watch this series about crosswords, other puzzles, and crossword construction. And uh, depending on the level at which you you donate, you you may also receive a mug with a don't check, which a once again get it wrong every time with a let's check the crosses slogan, and also recognition at the end of these videos. And to that end, today I would like to personally thank Victoria Rajishka as well as as always the inestimable Hood Monster and the incomparable Shantanu Bhatia. So thank you so much, Victoria, and. Hood Monster, and Shantanu. I very much appreciate your ongoing support. It means quite a lot to me. Helps keep this whole thing sustainable, which is great. I think it's great. I hope you do too. And I hope you will demonstrate that by coming back tomorrow for the Sunday crossword, the the big, long, leisurely solve, the big old grid, the biggest of the week. And um, I will be back. I hope you will too. Until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Saturday. Take care. (laughs) 